Hello, my name is Hunter Worthy, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite recreation activities. And the title of this presentation is For People Who Like to Hike. And I'm going to elaborate further and further on how to do this properly, but obviously, hiking is one of the best things that a lot of people have about their childhood or throughout their lifetime, connecting with nature, not having to do too much skillful work, but leisurely being able to connect with family, friends, and the natural world. The first stop that we'll make is leaving no trace. It might be the most key aspect to recreation in general. It, we, all we want to do is respect the environment to make sure it's the same way for our grandkids and generations to come. Make sure you plan ahead and prepare, travel and camp on durable surfaces, dispose of waste properly, leave what you find, minimize campfire impacts, which shouldn't be too much of a problem with, you know, hiking unless you planning on multi, multiple day hiking, elaborate on that. Respect the wildlife, definitely key, and always be considerate of others because you never know, this, this could be a very impactful experience for them. It could determine whether they want to do this in the future. And I mean, honestly, they're just trying to do the same thing as you. And you'll see if with these seven steps throughout the presentation, we'll be kind of elaborating on each bullet point. First thing I want to do, though, is break down how this connects with generations. I know from my, my childhood and many others as well, I remember going up to going up to the state parks, especially out in Tyler from where I am back home and taking these long hikes and stuff. We'd go fishing on the, on the hike, and we, I don't know, I, the best thing I can describe is just, you know, you have those memories that stick with you from a young age. Not all of them do, but I remember from maybe four years old going out and sharing fond memories with family members, and really it got me into wanting to be an outdoorsman, and really this is where I am today probably because of those experiences from a young age. So what I'm trying to say is this, doing this activity the right way and keeping it interesting and keeping everything in good conditions for the youth is key to helping our natural world, you know, stay intact, I guess, for generations to come. One stop I wanna make is you know, doing this hiking thing the right way is knowing your experience level. Obviously, when we think of hiking, a lot of us have different opinions on what hiking is. For people that are just leisure, want to get out in the day, key yourself to the top left of the screen over here. See, it's a really beaten down path. It's not too uphill, not too many obstacles in there. And, you know, you might want to take your young kids on these levels and stuff and, you know, just leisurely enjoy the environment and really connect. I know that's all it took for me whenever I was a young kid to do this. And I would like to say, once you really get experience in hiking, some people like to take this to a new level. And that's where you'll see, you know, the intermediate level where it's a little bit more of a beaten path and, you know, or a little bit less of a beaten path, rougher patches, rocks everywhere. You got to be aware of your surroundings and aware of your health conditions and aware of, you know, the environment in general. And then you really take it, want to really want to take it to the next extreme. You look to the top right, this man up on the top of a mountain, having to hold onto the railings and stuff. But it's a it's a challenge, and some people enjoy that. It just depends on who you are. Now, next thing I want to elaborate on is packing for the occasion. Always bring disposable water bottles. If you're going to be out for long durations, make sure you bring your food. Nature Valley is always clutch. Bring some deep offwood spray, any kind of bug spray will work. Sunscreen if you're in a sunny area. Wear the proper foot equipment. Wear the proper foot equipment. I can't say that enough. You don't want your feet suffering because then it's not going to be fun. And preferably, I would say in most occasions, you might want waterproof, you know, footwear. If you're going out in a more, you know, rough area, a little bit, you know, I guess, Travel, less travel, I guess. Let's put it like that. You're going to want to bring that Silver Ranger compass down here or any kind of compass just so you know your direction. The Silva one gives you an advantage because it gives you, you know, an azimuth to go off of, which is a straight line through the forest based off, you know, magnetic field of Earth. And 
you know, just take a compass, be prepared. Don't get lost. Mm -hmm. Another way that can ruin your experience. Bring other sunwear like a hat or something like that or sunglasses. If you're going anywhere that is less traveled, deep woods, mountains, rivers, bring your first aid kit. Be safe. Seriously. You can go, oh, I don't need a first aid kit. That's, that's famous last words. Make sure you bring that. And also bring a map. Get to know the area. Know where you're generally at. There's a lot of cool features on maps that you might go to a place that you never would even known if it wasn't marked on that piece of paper. Definitely bring a map if you can. Major key here in state parks and importantly national parks. I'm going to go ahead and take off on a little tangent here. Staying on the beaten path in national parks, especially in the tundra ecosystems, is incredibly key because they're very sensitive to weight. You can see this woman over here. Not exactly on the beaten path. These people up here, not on the beaten path. Whenever they get trampled, those, those things are dying. Those plants are dying. They're sensitive to that. And they're rare because they only grow at that altitude. But I'm just going to bring this back into general now. I mean, you want to stay on the beaten path. There's poison ivy. There's snakes. You want to you know, stay on a durable surface so you're not compromising the integrity of the ecosystem and the environment around you because animals rely on that stuff and you know you may have an accident out off the beaten path and you might you might hurt something of their habitat you might affect it just don't just play it safe and stay on there there's a lot to enjoy on a path maybe possibly the most key thing whenever you're in heavy wildlife areas don't be that person that's trying to take the good picture for your Instagram or your Facebook or your Twitter or your Snapchat. Don't do that. Enjoy it. Live in the moment. Really, really try to connect and experience what's going on because honestly, what we do to get out in nature a lot of time is to get away from the screens, get away from the fast paced world. And we want to be there, be in the moment. If you're taking pictures and putting yourself at risk like this guy is with this big black bear, then, and you're just trying to get a picture of it, you're still living through a screen. Look at these people here. They are clearly, they're just enjoying their time, experiencing and living. And you're going to want to stay about 75 feet, you know, basically from any animal, but 150 feet would be preferable which is about two bus links. Just try to live in the moment and ignore those cell phones and those cameras and stuff if you can, for the most part, unless you're at a safe distance. But don't put yourself and others at risk just so you can get a picture. Another key thing is dispose of your waste properly. Bring, you know, just do not bring plastic water bottles. Try to bring one that you can, you know, refill. Anything, try to pack in containers that you can take back home and you can wash and stuff. Don't, don't bring containers like Ziploc bags and stuff, you know, where you're going to throw it all over the place or it might blow out of your bag or just try to minimize the amount of stuff you bring into the habitat that you're hiking in and make sure your stuff goes in the trash if you do have that disposable items. And like I said earlier, respect others. This is a heavy, you know, this is a, pretty heavy population on one trail but all I can say is you know you want people to have that same special experience that you're having you want the youth to connect with what is going on around them because that will put our natural environment in a better place in the future it, it just is a good thing overall and honestly just be good to people it's it's a good thing to do it's the right thing to do they're trying to enjoy that same experience as you. Let's all make sure we can really live as one in the natural environment. And that's going to wrap up the presentation for today. I hope you learned something about hiking. I hope you maybe gained a different perspective on why leaving no trace is so important and, you know, why it's so important for the younger generations and the generations after them, because our natural environment is at risk right now. And you want those people to care about it. You want them to seriously, seriously care about what they're doing. And whenever there's people behind the projects, the integrity remains the same and it remains intact.
Thank you very much. Y'all have a great day.